Here I'm going to do a gesture drawing of a hand and I am breaking my vine charcoal so it's just about the size that I like. Going to get started here with that very very rapid 30 second drawing that I've been uh, exhorting you to begin with where you just take the side of a piece of charcoal and um, make the shape that you want to make. And you'll notice that I'm making the hand much larger than it is in real life. I encourage you to do that too. My gesture drawing, my first 30 seconds or whatever, very, very light. Now as I get going again here, I'm going to immediately begin to use the negative shape to correct my drawing. You could go in with lines first, but this time I'm going to go in with the negative shape. That is my own favorite way, as I've already <laughs> revealed, <laughs> to correct a drawing and to see things accurately. And one nice thing about using your hand as a model is there's typically tons of neat negative shapes around those fingers. I'm in the habit, as, as, especially when I do this as an, as an exercise uh, for teaching, of drawing my negative shapes out to the edge of the format. And uh, one reason to do that is it just makes you think a little bit sooner in the drawing about how big your drawing is, ideally someday you're going to be composing uh, drawings or maybe paintings that um, really uh, design, compose the whole rectangle rather than just drawing one object. And the sooner you think about negative shape, the easier that will be. Now I'm going back in with a line, of course, and here you see me taking a horizontal. Usually I do just do this in my imagination. Here, because I'm uh, making the video for you, I'm, I'm uh, literally making the line on the page. So going across there to see is that knuckle um, on the same level with the tip of my thumb, which it is in my drawing. So is it in real life? And I'm checking that, I'm checking to see if that finger is um, sticking out too far to the right and it looks to me like it was. I'm moving it a little over to the left and I did that by taking kind of a plumb line down from the tip of the finger and seeing if it um, goes through the same objects in my drawing as it does in real life. So again I'm taking a horizontal there across. I want to see where to put the uh, side of that uh, fingernail that I'm drawing. I want to see how um, high or how low it is in the context of the rest of the hand. So these very, very light or even imaginary horizontal lines you see me making, I do that constantly when I draw and um, verticals as well. Typically I do them just more in my imagination. I'd like to emphasize that I'd, re I'd really like you to uh, make your drawings as large as you can. When I was drawing a figure in another demo, I made it as large as I could make it on the page. Here again, I'm pretty much making the hand as large as I can make it on the page, which is much larger than real life. You get to draw things whatever size you want, but the um, you don't have to stick to the size it is in real life, of course. But the nice thing about drawing big is that if you get something a half an inch off, it isn't the end of the world. Whereas if I were drawing that hand in real life, uh, I mean the size it is in real life, and I got something half an inch off, I'd, um, be, it'd be a shame. Here's the triangulation that I mentioned in the notes to this exercise. I'm making a triangle between the tips of those three fingers, and then I'm looking at my hand and seeing is that triangle the same shape? So you're looking for ways to flatten things out, to see their geometry um, as it really is projected against your picture plane. Making a triangle between the bottom of that negative shape and those two fingertips. I 
I remember because I um, just did this drawing this afternoon. I'm doing a voiceover later, of course. Um, the that uh, index finger ended up getting moved around quite a bit because the foreshortening on it was very challenging, and I kept feeling that I hadn't seen it quite right. I'd really like it if you could try to put your hand in a position that requires some foreshortening. That's a great challenge and uh, very, very important to deal with as soon as possible when you're learning how to turn three dimensions into two. Foreshortening, of course, means that the finger is sticking right out towards me. So the thumb is not seen in a foreshortened position in this drawing, but the index finger and that middle finger really are. They're kind of sticking out towards me. Very important to keep moving all over the drawing to get good proportions. And you'll notice that I'm moving from one finger to another and not really spending a lot of time on each one. I'm trying to improve everything as I touch it, but I'm certainly not trying to perfect anything. And I uh, have the habit of backing up from my drawing. I'm doing very little of that um, now because I'm trying to make these uh, videos for you quite uh, brisk and efficient so I don't waste your time, <laughs> but the, um, it is important to step back from your work and look at what you're doing. One nice thing about using the negative shapes when you draw is that you can sort of use them as an eraser. So if you have uh, um, a little bit of extra positive shape that you uh, realize you'd like to get rid of, just draw the negative shape right over. And you'll notice that I'm going back and forth from working with line to working with tone now. At this point, I'm beginning to commit myself to some things. I'm working with um, some darker values, trying to extend the value range of the drawing. I uh, can't resist putting in a little bit of feeling of light and shade, which I don't think you need to really be working, worrying about in uh, these first drawings that we're doing. But uh, it sure is hard to resist with vine charcoal in your hands. Vine charcoal is such a um, fluid medium. Artists have been drawing with it for, well, just thousands and thousands and thousands of years. I, uh, I imagine somebody uh, sitting around some primeval campfire, um, picking it up and drawing on a rock and uh, thinking, hey, this is great stuff. I can do anything with this. Wonderful for turning a uh, line, even a wrong line, into a nice shadow or um, a silvery value. So experiment with the two types of charcoal that you have. You should have both vine and compressed. And I'm doing this drawing entirely in vine, and which gives it a very soft and uh, almost a little bit watercolory look compared to compressed, which is gets gets much darker um, and is not quite so easy to move around. Although it's very fun to rub into, you can see that there's. You almost can't make a mistake with vine charcoal because it is so easy to uh, rub away. So a hand is a wonderful thing to draw. Great to get uh, very expressive and dynamic poses and a wonderful substitute for the figure if you don't happen to have any figure models um, handy when you're uh, trying to do some nice athletic gesture drawings. I'm sure this isn't the last hand we'll draw in this class, <laughs> but there you have it, a um, 
10 minute or so charcoal gesture drawing of the hand.